morning, church. Hope you're having a good start to your day. Appreciate you tuning in, catching our uh, devotional series in the book of Philippians. We're uh, right here uh, in the middle of chapter 2, looking at the submissive mind, maintaining humility in our Christian lives. One of the hardest things to do, and but it helps as we're looking at the example that Christ gave us, our ultimate example for everything in the Christian life. And uh, so we've been talking about Christ over the last couple of days and uh, we are in verses 5, really through 5 through 11 is the text we're in. We've been uh, kind of pulling apart here. And uh, we looked last couple times at the different aspects of this passage here. Where he says there, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. We talked about him being a servant last time and how he serves, and of all people to be a servant, God Almighty coming down and serving man. What, a, what an awesome display of humility we see in Christ. But not also did he serve, he also sacrifices. And verse 8 really is uh, the extent of his sacrifice. It says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was willing to go to this extent in order to serve, in order to, uh, in order to accomplish his ministry, but this was the extent of his humility. At any time, any point along the way of his sacrifice, he could have stopped everything. He could have said that was enough. He could have stepped away from it, um, but he didn't. He was he was willing to go all the way to the end. Uh, I think about the passage in John where he says, "Having loved them to the end, he loved them to the uttermost." And, uh, and, and that is all, all the way through. It, it didn't, he didn't stop uh, at any point. But a lot of people are willing to serve in various capacities as long as they're willing to get something out of it, or at least uh, if it doesn't cost them anything. Jesus laid his own life down. That's the example of sacrifice that he gives us and the, the extent of his willingness in his humility. This wasn't the death of a martyr. This was the death of a savior. And uh, this was a sacrificial death. Nobody took his life. He gave it a ransom for many. Uh, it's been said many times, but it's true. Ministry that doesn't cost, that costs nothing, accomplishes nothing. And if it doesn't cost you, it's not going to accomplish anything. I, I, I remember reading this uh, when we were going through this the study of the book of Philippians years ago. And I came across this, this uh, illustration. I think it's a perfect illustration. There was a religious festival going on in Brazil. And there was a missionary that was going through from different booths, from one booth to another. And he came across one booth that uh, had a sign up and it read, Cheap Crosses. And somebody was selling little, little trinkets, little crosses. But the sign said, Cheap Crosses. And he thought to himself, that's what a lot of Christians are looking for these days, cheap crosses. And uh, the thought of that is just kind of humorous, but it does speak to the truth of a lot of people's Christianity is that, we want to carry a cross. We just don't want it to cost us anything. But that defeats the purpose of the cross. And picking up your cross is is a sacrifice. Carrying your cross. The cross, what was the cross? The cross was an implement of death. It wasn't just some token you wear around your neck. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But the whole idea of carrying your cross, bearing your cross for Christ, is that you're willing to die to yourself. You're willing to sacrifice in order to fulfill God's will for your life, and really in order to have an impact in the lives of other people, it costs you. And if we're not willing to sacrifice, if we're not willing to pay a price, then we're not going to see anything done. We're, we're certainly not going to put others before ourselves because a big part of putting others before ourselves is it costing us. I heard a preacher years ago say, and it's so true, if you're going to be a blessing to anybody, it's going to cost you time and money. And that's true, and probably other things as well. Um, but I think of Second Samuel twenty four twenty four, when uh, David is coming and he's trying to stop the plague as as he has sinned and counting the uh, the people taking that census and his being lifted up with pride and God judging the people, and uh, it's time to stop the judgment and he's running quickly to to try to stop it, and he sees Arana or Ornan depending on if you're in Second Samuel or in Second Chronicles, but. Uh, he goes and he's going to buy this threshing floor from him in order to sacrifice to God to appease the wrath of God and stop the judgment. And it says, The king said unto Arana, 
uh, uh, nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. David said, I'm not going to sacrifice a free offering to God because that's not a sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice something that costs me something. That's what real sacrifice does. It, it costs me. I feel it. I should feel the sacrifice. Otherwise, it's not a sacrifice. Christ sacrificed everything for us. And as we're looking at the, the, the submissive mind, we're thinking about putting other people before ourselves. We're thinking about humbling ourselves down and having a, a, a mind of humility. We've got to remind ourselves that at times it's going to cost, it's going to hurt in order to, to do this, in order to be a blessing to other people. It's going to sting. It's going to cost us. Sometimes it's going to be, it's going to be thankless. I tell you, right now in our church, we have a great opportunity. God has really opened up some doors of opportunity to minister to some families. We're having some new visitors coming. We have some uh, people that are returning, and uh, we have some new kids, some new adults. And this is a great opportunity for us as a church to reach into the lives of some people. But it's going to cost us. It's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us effort. It's going to cost our people seeing the vision to step up and to go after people and invest time into people. It may cost people willing to go and drive and pick some people up. We Right now, we have a van route that has grown, and I'm glad it's grown. It's grown to the pl to point where we actually need two vans because we have kind of a southern route going on down in southern, southern Maryland, and then we have the northern route. And, uh, and it's just too much for one van. We really could use some Christians to stuff and say, hey, I'll do it. I'll take my van and go pick up some kids down there so they can come to church. That's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be a sacrifice of time. And a lot of Christians just aren't going to be willing to do it. But we need some people that are willing to do it. Why? Because that's how the ministry goes forward. And catching the vision like this, seeing it as I'm willing to sacrifice, I'm willing to pay the price is how the, work of, uh, how the work of God goes forward. And it's also how you're going to maintain your joy. All these things tie into your joy because a selfish Christian is a miserable Christian. The most miserable Christians I know are the ones that are most selfish. And uh, it, it almost is counterintuitive. We would think, well, if I do more for myself, I'll feel better. But really, I feel lousy. When I do more things for other people, I come out of myself and I step into a mind of Christ. And that's where I need to be. And so I want to challenge you today. Look for opportunities to be a blessing. Look for opportunities to sacrifice. Look for opportunities that you can step out of your own uh, needs, your own wants. Look into the plight of other people. Try to lift somebody's burden today, and I guarantee God will bless you for it. And so hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you join us tomorrow for our next devotional, and may God bless you.